Hello everyone. For this topic of general chemistry, I will discuss liquids, solids, phase changes. A physical state is one type of phase. Key point here is that phases are physically distinct and they need to be homogeneous. For example, oil and water are physically distinct and do not mix. Hence, their mixture would be considered to have two phases. Solid, liquid, and gas are familiar to us. Intermolecular forces and kinetic energy affect the properties of the phase and phase changes. Chemical behavior of the three states are identical, that is, they have similar intramolecular forces. The bonds that connect the atoms are the same regardless of the state. Physical behaviors of the states differ. That is, different strengths of intermolecular forces are present. The strengths of the intermolecular forces present in liquids are not the same as the strength of the intermolecular forces involved in gases. Here are comparisons of the three states of matter. The gas conforms to the shape and volume of the container. They are highly compressible and has a high ability to flow. Liquids conform to the shape of the container and the volume is limited by the surface. Their compressibility is very low and their ability to flow is moderate compared to the gas. For the solid, they maintain their own shape and volume. They are almost incompressible and almost no ability to flow can be observed. We can say that solids and liquids are condensed states. Liquids and gases are fluids. They easily flow compared to solids. The intermolecular attractions in liquids and solids are stronger compared to gases. And particles of solids has the highest degree of ordering. There is a decrease in ordering, moving to liquid and then to gas. The different types of phases can interconvert and call the conversion of a solid to liquid as melting or fusion. Liquid can crystallize or freeze to form solids. Gas can condense to a liquid and liquid can vaporize to gas. Similarly, solids can sublime to gas, and gas can deposit into solids. Take note that condensing and freezing are exothermic changes. For example, liquid particles lose energy as they become solids. The same way when gas particles condense to liquids. Thermal energy present in the particles are lost to the environment. The reverse of these processes, melting and vaporizing, are endothermic changes. You need to infuse a certain amount of heat in order for a solid to melt. Heating is required to convert a liquid to gas. Overall, a phase change is essentially a change in intermolecular distance 
and freedom of motion. Each phase change of a pure substance has a specific enthalpy change at the temperature of the change. Opposing processes have the same magnitude of enthalpy change, but opposite signs. Consider the conversion of liquid water to water vapor. The heat of vaporization is about 40.7 kJ per mole at 100 degrees Celsius. If the reverse process occurs, that is, water vapor is converted to liquid, the heat of condensation is just the opposite sign of the heat of vaporization, negative 40.7 kJ per mole. Usually, it takes less energy to melt the solid form than to vaporize the same mass of the liquid form. The molar heat of fusion of water is 6.02 kJ per mole at 0 degrees Celsius. This is significantly lower than the molar heat of vaporization. The difference in these values tell us that the conversion of liquid to gas for a certain material requires more energy than the conversion of the solid material to liquid. The heat of sublimation can be calculated from the molar heat of fusion and molar heat of vaporization using the Hess's law. Here are the heats of vaporization and fusion for several common substances. Not only does this show the higher values of the heats of vaporization compared to heats of fusion, it also shows the general increase of these enthalpy values as the strength of the intermolecular forces within these substances increase. Heating and cooling curves show the changes that occur when heat is added to or removed from a sample of matter at a constant rate. We can start from a solid, and as heat is added to this solid, the temperature will increase up to the point of melting, where liquid forms. Then, as heat is added further, we will get to a point where the liquid will start to vaporize and form the gas. Further infusion of heat will further increase the temperature associated to the gas particles. Within a phase, infusion of heat is accompanied by a change in temperature, and a phase change occurs at a constant temperature. The amount of heat involved in these transformations can be calculated using the following formulas. These are formulas that were discussed in the thermochemistry topic. For example, in solids, heat can be calculated from the mass, specific heat capacity, and change in temperature of the substance. The amount of heat involved in the phase change can be calculated using the molar heat of fusion and the molar heat of vaporization of the substance. We can also calculate the reverse when heat is removed. In this case, with condensation and freezing. As mentioned in the previous slide, there's only a change in sign during this calculation. Exercise 1. Determine the amount of heat lost or gained by 2.50 moles of gaseous water in a closed container with a pressure kept at one atmosphere 
and the temperature changing from 130 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, given the following values. We could illustrate this change using this cooling curve. The starting temperature is at 130 degrees Celsius. Here, only water vapor is present. As heat is removed from the system, the temperature will cool down to 100 degrees Celsius. Here, the temperature will remain constant until all the water vapor is converted to liquid. When this transformation has finished, the temperature will go down again until the final temperature of 30 degrees Celsius is reached. Thus, we can have three stages. In stage 1, we can use the molar heat capacity of water vapor. In stage 2, the molar heat of vaporization is employed. And in stage 3, the molar heat capacity of liquid water is utilized. Take note that 2.50 moles of water is present. For stage 1, we first need to calculate the change in temperature. Given that the initial temperature is 130 degrees Celsius and the final temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, delta T is equal to negative 30 degrees Celsius. The unit, degree Celsius, needs to be converted to the Kelvin scale for consistency. And in this case, we can have the same numerical value for the change in temperature, negative 30 Kelvin. Plugging in these values to the formula, and cancelling the units, Q1 is equal to negative 2500 joules or negative 2.5 kilojoules. For stage 2, this occurs at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Here the values are just plugged in to the formula. The heat of vaporization is given a negative value. This is equivalent to the molar heat of condensation at 100 degrees Celsius. Moles are cancelled and we will get negative 102 kilojoules. At the last stage, stage 3, the initial temperature is 100 degrees Celsius and the final temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Our delta T is 30 minus 100 degrees Celsius is equal to negative 70 degrees Celsius. We convert this value to Kelvin, this value to Kelvin and take the difference and the numerical value in Kelvin is equal to the numerical value Celsius. If we plug into the formula, we will get negative 13,000 joules or negative 13 kilojoules. Taking the total of all the heat values for stage 1, 2, and 3, we will get negative 118 kilojoules. It means that 118 kilojoules is lost by the system during the whole process.